Today I want to talk to you about multiple sclerosis and what prompted this was this book that you see here, Minding My Mitochondria by Dr. Terry Walls who had progressive multiple sclerosis. And many of you that are watching this video I'm sure are very familiar with this. But basically Dr. Walls, she was totally reclining, inability to walk and this was not good. And she decided what can I do? What can I observe that has happened? and look at it a different way. And she, she felt there was a reason that the multiple sclerosis was progressing. And in a nutshell, and I would suggest you get the book, she basically entered into a nutrition program in which she was looking at what types of foods would provide antioxidants and help the body heal. Now, the interesting part she used was in this, she also used what is called a functional electrical stimulator, and some of you refer to it as a muscle stimulator. And I have a video up that you can go look at on our MedFax Inc. website and about muscle stimulation or what is truly called functional electrical stimulation. But she actually started using a, a, a functional electrical stimulator. Now, in Dr. Wall's basic comments, and let me explain what I think actually happened. Here's a human brain. And in your brain, you have a bunch of nerves all over the place. And these nerves actually come down into the body. And they also have a feedback loop to give the message back up to the body, up to the brain, that there has been a summons to do something and that do something may be to pick up a coffee cup. So I'll make us a little coffee cup. Let me put another color and we've got to have some heat coming out of the coffee cup. So the brain decided to pick up the coffee cup. The brain was totally capable of forming the intent to signal what needs to be done by the muscles down here to be able to pick the coffee cup up and bring it up to the mouth and drink a cup of coffee. Well, one of the problems with multiple sclerosis is these nerves up here, and there's your nerve, and they're very close together. And in those nerves, on the outside of them, you have what's called myelin. It's a little sheath. And what I like to compare myelin to, and, and this is regenerative tissue, meaning the body has the ability to regenerate myelin. What happens in multiple sclerosis is this myelin starts deteriorating. It starts dying. So what do you end up having? You have a nerve where you have formed an intent to do something. The brain is trying to send the message down to the arm to the muscles, and there's a bunch of them involved, to achieve the function. But right here, there's a non-covering, and that's because the myelin has died. Well, what I compare it to is if you were in your house and you have a light switch, right in the middle is your light switch. If you push it up, the light comes on. There's your light up here, and we want to come on. You have a wire right there. There's your wire. So that the minute you hit this light switch, you allow electrons to flow to their target. When it gets to the target, you have the electrons that allow the production of light. Well, if this same wire also has a protective cover around it, very much like myelin, well, the problem comes if that covering, that plastic, that rubber that's on the outside breaks and you have another wire. If that wire touches this wire, that message, that flow of electrons up to the light to get light gets short-circuited. Your electrons go somewhere else. So do you achieve your thought your action was to turn this light on. You try, you form that intent, you do an act, but it never happens. 
Well, this is what I think Dr. Walls and some of her explanations are. In the brain, we've got so many nerves and this touching that the intent is formed here in the brain. The ability to walk, to move, to lift is still here. The problem occurs somewhere between intent and function, and actually it's up here in the brain, because we lack myelin, the message is getting lost. So, when you look at what Dr. Walls discusses, she, it, she's very big on the use of nutrition. You have to have that. She gets into ways that you can consume food and use less energy so that that food can be used to repair the myelin that has been destroyed. Once you repair the myelin, you no longer have these little green things of short circuits. They're gone. The myelin has covered it up. All of our nerves are now, they have reached the point that they have the insulation around them. The myelin's back. We cannot have a short circuit. Whoop. We cannot have a short circuit and it would get the function. Now, once you do that, the reason for using functional electrical stimulation is we want you to think. You want to do that. We want you to do that. We are using the nutrition. And now on the nutrition, what we're doing here is we're allowing faster repair, but we're making the process better so that you can walk, so that you can pick up. Because the intent in the mind and the function itself, we're bridging the gap. The multiple sclerosis patient couldn't get up. Now they start being able to walk. They start reversing this destructive progression and they use it using functional electrical stimulation with proper nutrition. Now the only caveat, or not only caveat, but one caveat I will tell you right now is the process of functional electrical stimulation. Moving muscles is an energy consumption function. If you're sitting still, your body is not using as much energy as it would be if you were working and moving. So nutrition gets to be more important, including water. You need plenty of water. Electricity uses water. But this is basically an electrical process in which we try to preserve and regenerate myelin so that the multiple sclerosis patient can then be able to re-achieve function. That is why we use a functional stimulator and we give the body enough nutritional matter. And again, nutrition, free radical, that's a loose electron. Antioxidant is a stable atom in which the body can use it, the cells inside the mitochondria to generate energy. But this is a basic explanation as I've been able to observe on what occurred with Dr. Walls and her use of nutrition and functional electrical stimulation. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight into why there does appear to be a possibility, a progressive attitude that multiple sclerosis is not going to be as detrimental as it has been in the past. Thanks for watching. At MedFacts, our priority is to educate and inform on topics such as pain relief, sports performance, injury rehab, nutrition, antioxidants, electron supplementation, and electrotherapy. We carry a complete line of electrotherapy devices and accessories including interferential, TENS, ultrasound, muscle stimulators, electrodes, and more. We are excited about being on the cutting edge of electrotherapy research 